Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never 10 minutes wasted. In the workshop this week, well, I'm building an alcove unit. I don't think I've done one of those on the channel before, so that'll be fun. Uh, and if you don't know what an alcove unit is, well, stick around and you'll find out. It's coming up next. So alcove units, yeah. Um, to understand these, you've got to know a little bit about the sort of typically Victorian housing stock that we have in this country, uh, in the industrialised cities, certainly London, of course, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, all, all the usual sort of suspects. Um, back in the day, these are, these are terraced houses, so row houses, uh, and they all follow a very similar pattern. Um, you go in through the front door and then either on the right or the left, depending on which way round it is, uh, there are two downstairs rooms, your front parlour uh, and your back parlour, and then there's usually a, 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 another room at the back, which was the back kitchen. Uh, uh, and the, because these are Victorian houses, they were built with, uh, they were heated by coal fires or wood burning fires, open fires. So each of the two downstairs rooms has a, a chimney in it, um, a chimney breast with an open fireplace, and that chimney breast sticks out into the room a little bit by about a foot or so. So you have an alcove, a niche, at either side of the chimney breast and that's repeated all the way up. In fact the two the two chimney breasts go all the way up through the uh, house to the first floor bedrooms and then in the loft space they sort of join together and then they both poke out of the top of the roof at a chimney stack. Um, most of these alcoves, most of these chimney breasts still exist because it's a huge job to remove them. It can be done, but there is literally a ton of bricks that needs to be taken out all the way down of each chimney breast. Then the roof has to be, the, the what's left of the chimney has to be kept because they're terraced houses. Half of the chimney belongs to next door, so it gets very complicated. And for that reason, the vast majority of people just leave the chimney breasts in, even though obviously nobody's burning fossil fuels in the city centres anymore. Um, what most people do though is use them to make extra storage and typically an alcove unit will comprise of a low cabinet with a bookcase or shelving above and that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, um, it's nothing, nothing fancy. You can have varying degrees of complexity or twiddly bits. Uh, you can have fluted face frames and you know mesh on the doors and all that sort of stuff. These are actually going to be fairly straightforward and fairly simple. And I will be doing a matched pair of these either side of the chimney breast. But we're actually just going to be doing one for now because uh, the customer wants to get that one in as soon as possible and then get some wardrobes built. And then we'll come back to revisit the other stuff uh, later on. So the uh, the alcove unit is, is going to comprise of a low uh, cabinet, about 500ml deep, about 900 just under wide, a little under three feet wide. It's actually quite a tall um, cabinet. I normally build these about 750, 760ml, about two foot six, um, but the client specifically requested that she makes it, we make it a little bit taller. So it'll be about 900, about three feet. And then again, there's a fixed shelf uh, in the bookcase above, uh, and that helps tie it together. Uh, and then we have three adjustable shelves. And again, we're putting the fixed shelf, again, a little bit higher than I would choose personally, but that's what she wants uh, to give space for potentially a bigger TV uh, in there. As always, there's a double socket behind the cabinet, so we'll need to make a cutout in the back for that. Uh, and then we'll need to do sort of a bit of work around the bookcase uh, to fill in around the edges, because obviously the walls are never perfectly true. So we've got to get that uh, all in, uh, tucked away quite nice and tidily and then fill the gaps in so that it doesn't look too bad. Now you're actually joining me a couple of days into the project. Um, I've done, made the doors already. Pretty much everything is cut actually. Uh, I've made, cut and made the doors already. Uh, we've got the components for the cabinet all cut and done. We've got the parts for the shelf, the sides on the top. We've got the shelves themselves. 
all done and lipped. Uh, we've got the back cut uh, and ready to go. So really, it's uh, we're pretty much there. I need to do the uh, do the shelf pins, the shelf pin holes. I need to make the plinth, uh, and then I need to drill the holes for the hinges and all that. Uh, and then really get the domino mortises done and uh, get it all nailed together. But before that, we need to paint, of course. So with the brain in gear and the mouth in neutral, I'm doing the domino mortises first, referencing our pencil marks where we need to, and relying on the pins for everything else. So we've got the mortises cut for the dominoes, uh, for the carcass and for the bookcase. That's all sorted. I'm just going to do the shelf pin holes now for the adjustable shelves. This is the left and right sides of the bookcase carcass. So left and right front faces here. <coughs> and what I've done, the fixed first fixed shelf is going to come in at 620mm. Uh, and I'll put a mark where that is. Uh, there. And I've marked it, I'm just using the uh, a little hinge uh, drilling guide to mark in where I want the rows of holes to come to. Um, and then it's just a question of settling these in. So that that Flash. Uh, the bottom fixed shelf is 22 mil. So we've got about that much space, and this top one is going to be 18. So we've only got sort of this much space to get the shelves, and I've made three shelves. I don't think there's going to be space to make this one, two, three. It's going to be pretty, pretty snug. But that's what the client wants, that's what the client wants. Um, but yeah, we've only got kind of this, this much space to, to work in, about a metre. Uh, and obviously you don't want pinholes way up here or way down here, because you're never going to want a shelf that's only, you know, an inch, uh, an inch high. Well, what we'll do, we'll flip these round. I'm going to bear off the top face on these uh, to drill, drill the holes, um, because it's only up in, in, in the top half of the... Uh, uh, of the bookcase, no point in using a long rail and bearing off the bottom here. It just uh, you know can bring in inaccuracies. So what we'll do, we'll just spin these round, uh, get them fixed down, and uh, get these holes done. So I'm going to risk repeating myself a little bit here. Um, I know I've talked about this in a previous video, but I appreciate not everybody has seen the entire back catalogue yet. So when I do shelf pin holes uh, for bookcases like this, or we'll do some more later on for the um, uh, for the for the shelf within the cabinet, I'm using Festool's LR32 guide rail, sometimes called the Holy Rail. Um, and it's a fantastic system. I, I don't personally use the whole 32 millimeter system. It's a bit over the top for, for the simple things that I want to do. Um, what, I, what I actually had done is a friend of mine, uh, who's a metal worker, a precision engineer, uh, actually turned up these little guys for me. These are little 32 millimeter wide discs with a thread in the center. And I just popped one of these at the, the bottom end of the guide rail where I want to work from. Uh, I've got the two pieces next to one another and they're bearing up against a, a, a block at the top there. So we're going to, all the pressure, all the force is going to be going that way. And these just sort of sit, they bear against the, the top edge as, as uh, in this case. Sometimes it can be the bottom edge, whichever one you want to use. And that's pretty much all there is. I've got my little LR32 offset system. You can check those out on the... Uh, Jigs and tips video. 
I've already marked where the holes are going to come. You just line those up. And that's it, there's no clamping, there's no fuss, no bother.